Hello folks, today I have a review of my 2012 BMW G650GS Sertal motorcycle. This is going to be a long-term review. This is my first home roll review I've done into this motorcycle. Um, I've had it for about 10 months now, so I've had a good chance to see what it's capable of doing and get an overall impression of it. Pardon me for the quality of the video and audio. I'm filming this in my uh, pretty dark garage on a GoPro camera, so um, I know I can do better, but please excuse me for that. Um, what I want to cover today uh, is basically my motorcycling history, some basic information about the bike, some things that I've done to it, some different upgrades, and then go right into the engine, braking, suspension, ride handling, that kind of stuff practicality and then overall impression. So um, we'll get right into it. My motorcycling history. Um, this is my second motorcycle. I got it in early uh, 2014 and it is December now, almost Christmas. And I've had the bike for 10 months. Uh, the bike I had before that was a 2007 Yamaha FZ6, which is a sport standard 600 cc kind of sport touring bike had that bike for a year and then i sold it and then got this um, so still a, a relatively new rider um, but i just wanted something more practical for what my style of riding was and something i could take off road a little bit and kind of explore those roads that i couldn't go down on my yamaha i bought this bike second hand from a guy who got it brand new he only put about 800 miles on it and since i've had it i have put um i don't know a little over 3,000 miles on it right now i think i'm just below 4,000. so i've been very pleased with it since i've had it um and yeah it's just been very very much a different you know bike to ride than my yamaha so um but yeah let's get into the uh, formal part of the review here. Um, I haven't really done all that much to it because uh, the bike came from the previous owner pretty well uh, how I would have liked it. About the only thing I have done to it is install these Rigid Industries neon dually lights. These are the spot pattern. I got them from uh, Black Dog Cycle Works. They also have the amber lens on there that actually gives the light a a very yellowish tint, not actually amber, so don't be fooled by that. Um, and I've also had installed a uh, Cyclops LED headlight bulb in there. That is considerably brighter than the stock halogen bulb. The stock headlight bulb in this bike really is pretty awful. So I wanted something that illuminated the, the road a little brighter at nighttime, and so mostly I can also get seen by other motorists. Something else I have done, and you probably have noticed at this point, is take off the big, uh, I think pretty obnoxious, <laughs> blue Sertal decal that was right here on the front fairing of the bike. I took that off on both sides and then some uh, dark gray stickers as well. Um, I just thought that those blue decals kind of made the bike look a little toyish and look a little, I don't know, juvenile, and I just really wanted to clean up the look of the bike. I did keep the ones here in the back just so you could tell what the bike was, but um, I just like the, the clean look the bike has now with all that, you know, jumbled up decal off of there. Um, so I'm really pleased with how it looks and it just came right off with a, a heat gun and you heat up the decal and it peels right off nice and cleanly. And one other thing I have done, I wouldn't really say you've done it to the bike, to the bike but it's more of an accessory. is installed this Airhawk 2 uh, cushion seat. Right now I don't have the actual air cushion in there uh, just because I uh, don't really like how it feels for day-to-day -day riding but definitely for long distance um, higher speed like highway jaunts it, it really does make the the bike way more comfortable. Now the engine uh, you can look up all kinds of specs on this bike so I'm not gonna do a rundown of the spec sheet but pretty simple um, 650 cc cylinder, um, single cylinder engine. Uh, this engine's been around for a long, long time. It was back on the F650 single uh, bikes and on the Dakar version. And um, 
yes, this engine is assembled overseas in Asia, um, but it still goes back to Germany to be back, put back installed in the bike. And uh, I haven't experienced any real quality issues with it. I'm very happy with the engine. It gets smoother and smoother every day. Um, everyone online has been saying that and I can I hear that these engines just go forever and ever. Now something I do need to tell you about is um, for my uh, date range motorcycle when my, my, my bike was assembled there was a a problem with what's called the decompression lever in the engine. This is the lever that opens up the exhaust valve and releases pressure inside the engine when the engine is hot so that it makes it easier for the the engine to, to turn over. Now this piece, this lever was not manufactured to the right tolerance or what they thought was the right tolerance and therefore when the engine is hot this this bike is hard to start. Um, the engine just seizes up and it refuses to turn over more than just one revolution and you have to let the bike cool down for 20 or 30 minutes until everything you know goes back to the original you know unexpanded um, geometries of those parts and then you can start the bike up again now this was not known to me when I bought the bike um, I had to found it, find it out on my own um, through various um, forums and online searches but I did discover that was the problem. Now I have not had it fixed yet um, because the closest BMW motorcycle dealer where they can have this work done is about three hours away and I don't have a trailer or a pickup truck so it's a little hard for me to get up there and everyone that I've asked says it takes several hours to do and I'd have to leave it overnight so I just haven't gotten around to doing that but I have found a workaround which is installing a better battery. Now this is not a surefire fix but it has for the meantime uh, addressed the difficulty in, in starting and what I did is I took out the awful BMW wet cell maintenance you know maintenance heavy battery that they come with and replaced it with a Motobat MB12U battery. Now this battery has higher capacity than the stock one it also has two more terminals for attaching different accessories on your bike. Um, but this battery is considerably better. It does not require any maintenance. You don't have to look at any fluid levels. It is maintenance free and it is awesome. And yes, I've had a occurrence where the bike hesitates to start when it's hot, but it always does eventually start up. So for now, that's working for me until I can get it into the shop and have the formal lever replacement done. But um, I just want to make everyone aware of that because I was not aware of it when I purchased this bike. And just for everyone's information, the service bulletin number for that decompression lever um, information bulletin issued by BMW is as follows. It is 11 space 003 space 12 space 015. If you call up your BMW dealer and give them that number, uh, they should be able to bring up the uh, decompression lever replacement technical service bulletin and it'll tell them exactly what they have to do and all the parts they need and exactly how to fix it. So if you have not had that done or don't know if your bike is affected, again, just pull up that service bulletin and they'll be able to tell you if your bike falls in the range of engine numbers that is affected. Now, on to the brakes. Um, there is one... Uh, brake disc up front and one in the rear. Um, this is not like the uh, bigger bikes in BMW's line that might have twin rotors up front, but um, I found that this is you know more than adequate for for most riding. Um, there have been a couple times when I was expecting um, initially sport bike-like um, capabilities as far as the brakes go, but um, that's not true. This bike is, is still pretty heavy and um, you know, while you do have the safety net of ABS brakes front and rear, uh, I, I do sometimes wish for a little bit um, better grab there, but all you got to do is just get used to it and, you know, start braking a little bit earlier, but um, nothing to be afraid of. Just know that, you know, with a, a 
relatively heavy bike like this, you're you're not going to have superior, you know, uh, brakes. You're not probably not going to be able to do stoppies. Um, but yeah, they're just kind of average brakes. There's not much more I can say about that. But uh, definitely a good feeling to have the uh, ABS on there. That's something I definitely wanted for my second bike, just because it makes me feel more comfortable in the wet and um, you know, in in emergency situations when you might need it. Um, I have felt it come on occasionally, uh, mostly when I ride off road. The ABS is uh, you can cancel it. Uh, you do have to come to a complete stop, but if you just stop and hold this ABS button right there, you can disengage it, which I do if I'm going to be off-roading for an extended period of time. But even riding on-road sometimes, if I hit the rear brake a little too hard, you can start to feel it through the, the brake pedal. You can feel the pulsing of the ABS system working. Haven't felt it on the front yet. Um, hope I never have to, but... Uh, once again, it's just a good feeling knowing that the ABS brakes are there should I need them. Now on to the suspension. Um, suspension on this bike is pretty basic. Um, nothing adjustable up front as far as I can tell. Again, if I'm wrong, um, feel free to let me know. But um, these front forks do not have any kind of protection, so that's something that you might want to consider. I've already... I kind of looked at something to protect those um, exposed shock shafts, maybe some kind of gaiters or um, I know Toratec makes some kind of plastic guard that uh, slides over there. So um, you may want to look at that just to protect your seals and extend the life of your, your fork. Um, the front fork is pretty soft and kind of spongy. Uh, it also makes for a very plush ride as compared to some other kind of bikes um, that are more stiffly sprung. Um, you definitely notice it when you're coming to a stop, that front end just dives down. Um, but again, you just get used to that. It's, it makes for a nice plush ride. The rear shock is, um, it is adjustable for, uh, preload and some damping. Um, the preload adjustment is, uh, right here on this little knob. You can turn it left or right and it can, um, increase or decrease your preload. Uh, and then the uh, damping adjustment, I'm, I know that's a very a generic term, but it's right down here on the very bottom of the shock, there is a, uh, a flathead, a, uh, a little slot there where you can get a, a flathead screwdriver in and turn it left or right. And then the owner's manual will tell you which direction makes it harder or, or, or softer. Um, generally, when you want to you know, adjust your preload here on this knob, you'll want to do something um, with the, the damping on the rear shock too um, to kind of compensate for that. Because you don't want soft damping in something really springy because uh, it'll just be like a pogo stick and obviously you don't want the opposite either. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic setup for, for the bike. This is BMW's most basic GS, so I didn't really expect much more than that, but um, I've heard of people swapping out the front fork for a, a, a Yamaha dirt bike fork, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with the, the way the front fork performs right now, and just for my general uses, I think it's fine. Since we're on the suspension, I figure we can go on to talk about just the general ride quality of the bike. Um, you know, coming off of that sportier bike, the Yamaha FZ6, um, which wasn't necessarily full-on sport bike, but it was certainly more stiffly uh, suspended than this bike. I'd say this one's really uh, a pleasure to ride. It's it's very soft, very supple. You really don't feel many of the, the bumps or ruts going down the road. Um, the stock seat, I'm not sure what everyone else thinks about it, but I think it's actually pretty decent. Um, it has this nice uh, texture on there that's very grippy. You're not going anywhere on there. Um, and it it's, gets pretty narrow right here where your legs come down to the pegs. So that's something that I like. Um, and then it goes up um, pretty decently up to the, uh, the, the fake gas tank there. Um, but, you know, for, for everyday riding, I think the stock seat is more than um, capable. I think it's uh, very comfortable. Um, but for those longer rides, I do suggest some kind of pad. You're really going to want it um, after a first, you know, 
hour and a half or two hours on the bike, you're really going to be feeling that vibration. Um, the windshield, um, that kind of goes in with the general ride quality. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, for general riding, it does just fine. Um, you know, I'd say it's a adequate height. I do wish it was a little bit wider. Um, you know, depending how, how big of a rider you are, it could probably suffice for most people, but I start to feel it on my shoulders and in my head, the, the buffeting at higher speeds. Um, lots of companies make aftermarket windshields that are a lot taller, so you may want to look into that, but for now, I think what I might look at doing is getting a Toratec adjustable windscreen mount because you can change the angle um, and, and the slope of your, your windshield. So I think I'm going to give that a try. It's a little bit cheaper than getting a whole new windshield and gives you more uh, adjustability. Um, I do kind of like the look of the smaller windshield. I don't like those huge, you know, Harley Davidson looking style windshields that just look obnoxious. Um, I don't want to completely have to be looking through a plastic windshield whenever I'm riding. Um, but um, that's just me. I like the minimalist look for, for certain things. So let's move on to general handling um, because that kind of goes hand in hand with suspension and ride quality. Um, this bike is not going to be a peg scraping bike <laughs> unless you are very daring or have some full on street tires on there because most people that have this kind of bike are going to run some kind of knobby or, or slight knobby. Uh, the tires I'm running right now are still the, the tires that came on the bike from the previous owner. They're um, Heidenau K60 Scouts, excuse me for not pronouncing that correctly, but um, you can look them up. They're a very popular tire for, um, for dual sport riders. Um, they actually do very well on the street and they're supposed to last a long, long time. Um, I've taken this bike through some fun uh, twisty roads through a, you know, a, a good, at a good pace and I've found that they are uh, surprisingly good for, I'd say, a 50-50 a uh, ratio knobby tire. Um, they're also very good in the wet and overall I'm very pleased with them. Off-road, the front tire does leave a little bit to be desired. Um, back tire is, is more than adequate, but, um, yeah, let's get back to the handling. This is not a tire review. Um, but yeah, I mean, this bike is, is very fun in the twisties. If you, if you take your time and pick a good line and, um, you know, be gentle on the throttle and the brakes and just be as smooth as you can. Um, I haven't had any close calls or anything in the turns, um, you know, of course, if you get into some sand or gravel on the turn, any bike's going to feel kind of unsettling. But yeah, it, uh, it, it's, a, it's a fun bike in the twisties, and you can have just as much fun for your, you know, your average weekend ride. Um, you know, again, this is a kind of a do-it-all bike. So, so you're not going to be great at doing everything. Um, but you're going to be okay at doing most things. And, you know, carving up the turns in this bike... As long as you're reasonable, you're still going to have a lot of fun. Um, you know, handling off-road, um, you're not going to go at a, at a pace like a dirt bike would, but you're going to be able to keep up with them, um, especially if there's some road sections in between. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with how this thing handles. Again, I'm a pretty conservative rider, and for the, the way I ride and the, the kind of roads that I want to look to go down, this bike... Um, takes everything that I've thrown at it. You know, I still consider myself a, a relatively new rider. Um, and I'm not trying to kill myself out there, but I still want to have a good time. So, um, yeah, this is a, a great bike for, for weekend warrior type guys that just want to get out there and have some fun with the rest of their buddies.